Greg Smith is a Conservative MP for Buckingham. So what do you make of this? Should the government be continuing with HS2? No, absolutely not. We need to just put this entire project out of its misery. Uh, I've consistently said that we can't afford it as a nation, that it's not needed, uh, and that it brings unacceptable environmental destruction in its wake that is very visible across the 19 miles of it that runs through my own constituency. Yet time and time again, the costs have gone up and up and up and up and up. And I'm, I'm on the Transport Select Committee. I was in the meeting yesterday where we were quizzing Sir John Thompson, uh, the £580,000 a year chairman and interim chief executive of HS2, where this additional £10 billion suddenly got added on to the price tag. We've just got to say, as the Prime Minister has already said for the parts north of the Hansacre Link, north of Birmingham, look, there's, there's better things we can spend this money on. Let's do it for phase one as well. So why aren't the committee listening to you then, Greg? Well, the Transport Select Committee is a scrutiny committee. It's not a, a decision-making uh, committee. I wish it was. I wish I, I wish I could just press a button and cancel HS2. Uh, and the committee has, has, you know, I'm not the only and the yeah. HS2 voice on that, that committee. Yeah. The committee has really, really pressed both the government and uh, HS2 Limited on this point. We, we just can't keep going on like this. We need to get uh, the project cancelled, the land that can be put back to its original use, be that farming, be that businesses. Well, let's get it back to how it was. And where the land is too far gone because bridges have been built or they've completely destroyed the soil, we need to have localised conversations about what we do want to do with that land, what we do consent. In, you know, in some places, that might be some modest house building. In other places, it might be commercial development or, or, or other uh, uses. But we need to do that on a site-by-site -site basis uh, where local communities consent to the other use for that land. What about the argument, you know, that is being made? We've spent so much money on this already. Wouldn't it be criminal to just scrap it? Well, yes, a, an enormous amount of money has been spent. But actually a Labour peer, a Labour member of the House of Lords, Tony Barclay, has calculated we can get the loss down to still an eye-watering amount of money, but we can get the loss down to about 8 billion pounds uh, through land sales, through other uh, reuses of, of the land that has been taken. Now, that's still a horrible waste. But is it better to say this ain't going to work? This is not a good project. We can't afford it. It's too environmentally destructive. It doesn't really bring any benefits anymore because everyone stopped talking about actually getting anywhere any quicker mm. and say, OK, that eight billion, it's lost. It's a tragic loss, but it's better than losing another 50 billion or 60 billion or 70 billion or whatever the final bill ends up at. I mean, rail experts would say that HS2 is still very much needed to relieve freight off our roads. How, how do you answer that argument? Well, 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 I've never really been convinced by this argument because, yes, there are some rail freight routes that, that could be created. You could actually, through uh, upgrades to the West Coast mainline and signalling upgrades, get more freight on the railways that we've already Got, but yeah, lots of people seem to present rail freight as some sort of mi mi you know, mysterious, mysterious, magical bullet that will suddenly take all the lorries off our roads. Well, no, it won't, because you've still got to use roads to get the goods to the railway, off the railway, to their final destination. So it's actually you know, not this magic bullet that people purport it to be. Yeah. Um, but we do want to get people out of their cars, don't we? You know, we're being told, you know, you should be using public transport. You shouldn't be, you know, it's better for the environment to be using public transport. Yet here you are saying we don't need I'm HS2. That. I'm going to challenge that because actually the motor car is becoming cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Even, you know, modern diesels are producing far less of the nasties out the back than they were 20 years ago. But more significantly than that, we have had the birth of electric cars, of hydrogen cars, of cars that aren't producing 
any pollution as we drive them. So this argument that we've all got to get out of our cars, to me, is a false one. The motor car is essential for rural communities. It's essential for most people in this country. And the answer is to lean on the technologies that are making those modes of transport clean and green and not polluting to our atmosphere rather than just throwing the baby out of the bathwater. I mean, but you're talking about people making individual journeys. Surely travelling at the same time is better. Well, it, it, it depends, doesn't it? If you are a family living in my constituency wanting to get the kids to school or uh, go to the shops, which, you know, you can't walk to the supermarket from small Buckinghamshire villages into Aylesbury or Buckingham or uh, some of the other surrounding towns. You need to go in a car. It's just not realistic to tell people they've suddenly got to, you know, all, you know go into car sharing and, yeah. uh, you know, take the train everywhere. It, that, that's just not real life. What we've got to do is we've got to ensure people have the freedom. People still can make the choices they want to make to live their lives in the way they want to live them, but use technology to ensure that those things aren't polluting anymore. Okay. So say the government say, yeah, Greg's got it spot on. I'm going to scrap this now. Those savings that we make, how would you spend them instead? So I, I think there's, there's multiple priorities that uh, we've got right now. Clearly, we do need some improvements to our existing railways, to the West Coast Main Line, both on signalling and getting uh, trains on the West Coast Main Line, onto the Chiltern Line that aren't diesel anymore, that are less polluting. I think that would be a good thing to spend some money on. I actually think, you know, we need to be giving people some money back. You know, we have a very, very high tax burden after the pandemic and the energy shock from the war in Ukraine. I think people deserve to have less taken out of their pay packet every month. I'd love to use some of the savings for that. But what is important is that when you're spending other people's money, when you're spending taxpayers' money, you've got to spend this on things that people actually want and that the country actually needs. And HS2 doesn't fulfil either of those criteria.